Hey, what is going on everyone? It's me, Mr. Mario, and we're back over here at the GameCube, which is a system I don't cover all too often on here. But the last time I did cover it, it was a PicoBoot install, showing you all how you can open up the system and modify it using a Raspberry Pi Pico, using an IPL injection method. So it's been a pretty awesome mod that a lot of people have gravitated to and loved quite a bit. However, I will say that most people end up sitting and forgetting their PicoBoot installations, which is fine, but there are ways that you can update PicoBoot, and I'm going to be showing you all how you can update your PicoBoot installation. Now, for our prerequisites, you're going to need a few things. First of all, you are going to need your GameCube itself up and running and working. You're also going to need a way to access your Raspberry Pi Pico or whichever equivalent board you have installed. I know mine, for example, is a Raspberry Pi Pico, and mine is right behind the controller board right here, but when it comes to your install, I don't necessarily know what exact board, what setup, or where it is located on your GameCube. Now, I'm saying this here because everybody has their own install method. I've seen people put their Pico boot on the bottom side of the GameCube, so you don't even need to open it up. I typically see a lot of installs kind of to the side, but internally. So again, I put mine behind the controller board. But here's an example where friend of the channel here, Modsville USA, you can see he's working on a GameCube here and he's using a RP2040 tiny board. But on top of that, he ends up installing it pretty flush with the motherboard right here. Uh, we could even see near the end here because this was cool. So his looks something like this. So you could see that if you have a board that is installed like this, for example, you're going to have to get all the way down to the motherboard itself. So therefore, I am going to put a part in the video here showing how you can take apart your GameCube, but due to the different variances of where your install might be and how it was installed, I'm going to insert the full tear down here just so you all can follow along. Whether your chip itself is sitting outside of the console or it is directly flush with the motherboard itself. Before we get into that fully, some people might be wondering, is it worth updating my Pico Boot install? Why should I update? it, why do I need to update it? Well, first of all, you really don't need to update your system. Let's just keep that in mind. But if you are wanting to update, I'm going to direct you to the links linked down below in the description of this video. The first one is going to be for the Pico Boot project itself, which I'm sure this is what most people are going to be using. Now, the reason why I'm linking this here is not just for the download, but if you go over to the releases section here, you'll be able to see what the changes for several of these are. So for example, this one has a updated payload to Gecko Boot. It has improved improved compatibility with SanDisk SD cards. So let's say if you're a SanDisk user, this is probably a worthwhile update for you. Now keep in mind you should just be downloading the latest one, but even if we look at the history for example, if you're someone that is using the M.2 loader or interested in it, then again you're probably going to want to update your PicoBoot installation. So you can go ahead and come over here and download the latest build of PicoBoot for your specific chip. Now you can see here that there's two firmware files. Essentially there's one for the Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W, and there's one for for the Raspberry Pi Pico 2 or the Pico 2W. So it depends on which chip you have. You'll just need to download that firmware file and save it somewhere you can easily find it. I know mine, for example, is a Raspberry Pi Pico, just a standard one. So I'm going to get the latest Pico Boot full Pico.uf2 file. All right, now let's go ahead and get this GameCube disassembled. First of all, remove any game discs and disconnect any accessories you might have, including power, memory cards, any of that stuff. Flip the GameCube upside down, and we're going to take out the four game bit screws. These are going to be easy enough to find, so you will need your game bit size screwdriver, and they're just going to go into the four deepest holes on the bottom of the GameCube. Once these four screws have been taken out, you can flip the GameCube right side up, and then gently remove the top casing of the GameCube itself. I did a little bit of a shake right there because one of the screws just would not come out, so you might have to do that. But as you can see, once you take this off, you're able to see a lot of the internals of the console here. Now this console has definitely seen better days, so while you're in here, it might be a good excuse to clean it as well too. But let's take off some of the bigger pieces. If you come around from the back here, you can kind of just remove this plastic bit on the back of the console like so and keep it somewhere safe. Now come around to the front of the console and we can also remove the controller board right here. It kind of just pops off like that, but be careful there is going to be a ribbon cable that attaches to the motherboard itself. So gently pull up on that. Now good news, once we're inside the console, the rest of the screws are all Phillips head screws. So we're going to need some Phillips head bits. 
make sure that you take a smaller bit here and we're going to remove these four screws on top of these pieces that reside on top of the memory card ports. What I do is I just loosen each of these here, so both of these screws on each one, and then remove it with the metal piece that it comes with and just keep it all together like that. We can now switch to a larger bit, and from here we can work on the rest of the screws. So if you come over to the right side of the console, there's going to be five gold screws right there. Just go ahead, remove all of those, and keep them somewhere safe. If we rotate the console around over to the left hand side, there's going to be two screws right here which are going to hold in the fan itself. Go ahead and remove these two screws, and then remove the fan. Now don't just yank this out, you're going to want to be a little gentle and move this to the side because there's going to be three screws hiding underneath this. Just move these three as well. Great, now we can come around to the back side of the GameCube and, well, there's not too much of a surprise here, there's four screws around the back. Remove these four as well. Once all the screws have been removed, you can just lift up like that and there you go, the entire shield alongside with the optical drive has been removed. So your GameCube should look a little something like this. So now with your GameCube torn down to the point where you can access your PicoBoot chip itself, do not plug it in just yet. I am going to explain this here and let you know that you actually need to have power plugged into the GameCube itself and you're going to need to turn it on at one point. I know it sounds completely backwards, it sounds really odd, but if you don't believe me, I'm going to have this page linked down below in the description, which is the official PicoBoot wiki here from the developer himself. Now it even states here, the reason why we're doing this is it states, if your Pico is wired without an in-series diode, most installations prior to 0.4, it is recommended to disconnect the 3.3 volt wire during the update. This prevents supplying 3.3 volts to the console, which could put a high load on the power regulator on the Pico board. It can get very hot and potentially fail, causing irreparable damage. Alternatively, you can power on the console after connecting the Pico to the computer. And we're going to do this method here because this will allow us to safely update our Pico boot and you do not have to worry about soldering in any wires or desoldering any wires. That's why I'm going to be showing this method here. Now I'll only be showing this here with the stock firmware itself, but again, you just need to make sure you have the proper firmware file, which is a UF2 file for your specific board. I know mine, for example, is a Raspberry Pi Pico, so I'm going to be using this one right here. Now I'm going to show you two ways of getting this updated here. One is going to be strictly with the guide, and the other one is going to be, well, what what I did to make this work here. So what I'd recommend is do this in order. If the first one doesn't work for you, use the second method here. They're pretty similar, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Now the first option here and going strictly by the book involves plugging your Raspberry Pi Pico into your computer. And in order to do this, you have to find the only button on there, which will be the boot cell or boot select button, hold it down. And while holding it down, plug a cable, mine is a micro USB cable, but plug that cable into your Pico itself as long as it is connected to your PC. Once it has been connected, you should hear a chime on your computer, you can release the button, and over at your PC you should see this pop up here, which it's going to look like you plugged in a USB drive. If I go over to my PC here, or this PC, it shows RPI RP2. Yours might be a little different, such as RP2350, but it's going to show a USB looking drive right here, which is good, this is exactly what we need. However, this is where it doesn't work very well for me. The second part of this process is now turning on the GameCube itself. But you can see here, if I turn this on, well over at the GameCube itself, the Raspberry Pi Pico ends up giving me a solid green LED, meaning that it is now working. But also if you look at our computer here, it's now automatically been disconnected, meaning we cannot safely flash the firmware on here. However, there is a way that I was able to get it working. That might work for you. This we're kind of going to do it a little out of order, but it's really going to be the same steps. For this, you'll probably have to move your hands in a little bit of an odd way, but again, this is what worked for me. What you want to do is at your GameCube, make sure it is plugged into power. You're going to also want to plug the USB cable into the Pico itself, but do not plug the other end of the USB cable into your computer just yet. Just make sure it's plugged into the Pico. When it is set up like this, you're going to want to find the Pico, hold down the boot select button, and as you're holding it down, you're going to want to turn the console on. 
Now, once it is turned on, but you're holding down that boot select button, you should see that there's no LED showing up on the Pico this time around. That is expected. Now what you must do while the GameCube is running is plug the other end of that USB cable into your computer. And once it all works, your GameCube should be up and running. There should be no LED indicator on the Pico itself, but you should see over at your PC that your USB drive or your Pico itself is now plugged in. This popped up automatically, but if I close out of here, you could see the G drive is right there for me. Now all we need to do is flash the firmware over. In order to do this, open up your Pi Pico, find the firmware file itself, right click, copy it out, go into the Pico, right click, paste. Give it a few seconds for it to copy and flash over. And once it is done, this is automatically going to disappear. So it's going to disconnect from your computer, and you should know it's successful because if you look over at your Raspberry Pi Pico, you should see that there is now a solid LED on it. So congratulations, that means this has been updated. Now that it's been flashed, to make sure this works, turn off your GameCube, unplug it from power, then unplug the Raspberry Pi Pico from your computer, just disconnect the cable completely, and then turn it back on. You can go ahead and turn it on as it is partially disassembled right now, but make sure it is working. And if it is, well, congratulations, you've now been able to successfully update your Pico Boot install. Either way, that is about it for this video here. Hopefully it helped out, hopefully you all were able to take advantage and make use of some of the newer fixes, updates, and more with Pico Boot. And thankfully, although this was kind of a odd type of update here, I've never really had to update a system in this way or a mod in this way while the system was up and running. Although it might have been a little nerve wracking, hopefully, congratulations, maybe by the end, you've made it here. Either way, that is about it for this video here. This is Mr. Mario, signing off. Thank you all for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video and it helped out, a like would absolutely be appreciated. And if you didn't like it, a dislike is fine as well too.